The world runs on energy in its many forms to fuel transportation, manufacturing, heating and cooling, even growing our food. The energy we use comes from a blend of renewable and non-renewable sources, and Colorado is responding quickly to the need to produce energy efficiently and sustainably. In today's Science Bite, museum scientist Whitey Hagedorn looks at oil and wind and how those sources fit within the ever-changing energy equation. So what the heck is energy anyways? Energy simply stated is the ability to do work. Energy comes in a variety of different formats and we use it in a lot of different ways, from fueling our homes, to transportation, to building things, to even the food that we eat. We always have and always will use a variety of different energy sources. Each has its own advantages and disadvantages. But if you boil it down, energy really only comes from mostly two places, the Earth and the Sun. The Earth produces radioactive minerals and heat. The sun also produces heat and light. Those drive the wind, the waves, and through photosynthesis, that energy gets trapped in plant material, which later becomes a fossil fuel. A fossil fuel is basically stored solar energy. Some of these energy resources are nearly infinite and replenish themselves very rapidly on a human time scale. These are renewable sources of energy. Others take millions to hundreds of millions of years to regenerate. These are non-renewable energy resources. Human energy usage has been increasing throughout history but it's not necessarily sustainable. In order to meet increasing demands, we've got to be smart about how we use a blend of these two energy resources to meet that demand. Colorado's rich in these energy resources, and whether we're using conventional technology to tap oil on the ground like this nodding donkey behind me, or whether we're using yet to be developed technologies to tap into the largest oil shale deposit in the world out in Western Colorado. Colorado has always been a key player in energy production. To get oil out of the ground, there have been three recent game-changing strategies. The first is instead of just drilling vertically, we've been able to drill horizontally. The second has been the ability to sequentially fracture the rock that holds the oil, allowing it to more easily seep into the well. The third major game-changer has really been a change in strategy in which we've used directional drilling together with multi-stage fracking to get to oil that was previously thought to be inaccessible. All energy resources have advantages and disadvantages. Non-renewable energy resources are portable, powerful, and easily consumed. But they have disadvantages too. They produce toxic byproducts, greenhouse gases, and like mining anything out of the earth, their extraction is tough on habitats. Just as with non-renewable energy resources, here in Colorado, we're near the frontier of the renewable energy industry. We're taking advantage of novel engineering techniques and some of our state's natural attributes like wind to fuel our energy needs. There have been three major game-changing technologies employed in modern wind energy systems like these. The first is at the top of the turbine with more efficient generators. The second is in the way that the blades can articulate and rotate at the top of the turbine. And the third is the ability to build very large, lightweight, flexible composite materials that can produce enormous blades. In wind energy, bigger is better because when you double the size of a wind turbine blade, you almost quadruple the amount of energy that you produce. Just as with non-renewable energy resources, renewable energy resources like wind have advantages and disadvantages. Wind energy has an advantage in that there's no greenhouse gases or pollution. It has a relatively small environmental footprint, and windy, wide open spaces like this are fantastic locations to harvest this natural energy resource. Wind energy also has some disadvantages. It's not particularly portable, and places that are windy are oftentimes far from where people live and need the energy. And just like any other natural resource, in order to build a wind turbine, you have to mine natural resources from the earth, and that has an impact on our environment as well. You can have an impact on energy too, by choosing how much energy you use, where you get it from, or joining the energy industry itself, perhaps bringing some fresh new ideas to this vital part of our lives. DMN 